we have two months left before the realization of the fertilizer shortages is here. I'm just wondering if the news is going to run with it also to create Probably the artificial not. panic and create the artificial shortages because the supply chains will not catch up at the state they are now. Once hyperinflation hits, that's what happens, right? You can't you can't replace the goods and service. So a vendor cannot replace the goods and services for the amount of these pieces of paper or even digits in, uh, you know, in an intangible fashion. So they would, yeah, they'd much rather have physical silver, physical gold, because they know that it holds its value more. Good afternoon, everyone. This will be one of the most important interviews that you're going to watch through the entire year on timelines. Money and food. Important for both. Keeps your body alive, yet allows you to buy things to be able to prepare for the future. Have with me Lynette Zhang, ITM Trading. You can check out their YouTube channel. Incredible amounts of information on where the reset might start, the triggers for the reset, how you want to protect your wealth. So how do you protect during these cataclysmic economic times? And how do you protect during these cataclysmic protein deficient times? I'm just going to preface it by saying we live in a world of cycles. Time is not linear as we've been taught since birth. Cycles return. Understanding the amplification of solar cycles in terms of centuries, millennia. So these cycles are built in. The mythologies and science today can prove that we're in cycles. Our solar system revolving around another solar system and another star is also an orbit in itself that can be calculated. You know where we sit today, 220 million years in the future, we'll come back to the same exact spot. Those kind of length of cycles have been known, mapped out. So what are the effects on our world here? Do you think these stories of legends of breaths of dragons, maybe they were referencing solar winds, the pouring out of the heavens. Well, maybe that was uh, some sort of effect electromagnetically that caused static electricity to build up in cloud layers and ring out the heavens, literally. So when we go back through myth, legend, prophecy, we come to write this time. I mean, look at these cycles and that, that's the way to preface it, but who would have very specific information about the cycles, understand the change of society and civilization was at the crux of time right now. And if you knew that information, would you not try to continue to control power moving through the cycle, controlling, riding on top of a natural cycle to retain power during the collapse moving through? Fertilizer shortages were inbound here anyway, 13% global fertilizer reduction before the Ukraine, before the Russian crisis, 13% reduction in global fertilizer was already here well before that. And herbicide shortages, which were going to knock global supply chains of anything grains down about 18 to 20% anyway without Russia. So I think there's a few maskings of causes here. I think it's being more controlled and especially your control to food. So Lynette, thanks for joining because I'm curious about the control to money and how we protect ourselves. And I know that I'm quite unique in this perspective, but I go from my personal experiences that I've lived through because that's what I can trust. I don't care. I don't care about opium. I care about reality. And when I'm looking at gold, personally, I only buy collectible gold. Why? because I had an uncle that was a major antique dealer. And when I was about 10 years old, he showed me two huge floor safes in his home. And that would have been 1964 when it was illegal to hold more than five ounces of gold. And he probably had at least 3000 ounces in there in the legal way. And he did it legally because they were pre-1933 and our government had confiscated gold. And when you go back to all of the wars, the Civil War, the War of 1812, the Revolutionary War, and then again, I mean, as we were transitioning into this perpetual central banking uh, era, they confiscated gold. And they had to because that's how they fund the wars. And we've been in a perpetual state of war since 1989. So people go, oh, they wouldn't do that again. Well, then you're, then you're living on hopium. I want to be just like I want to be connected 
to I want to make sure that I can can get all the food and everything that I need, but I want to make sure that I can hold my wealth. And when people say, oh, well, I just wouldn't give it to them. I want the kind of gold that I can go out and buy other assets with. So therefore, I want the kind that would still be legal if the other is not legal. And I can't guarantee either one, but I don't know. If it's happened the same way every time and we're doing the same thing, uh, you know, expecting anything else is hopium. And that doesn't really work very well for me personally. Yeah, I was just thinking, imagine the rad pieces he had, because if you're talking about pre-33 gold in 1950, which is a 20 year difference versus pre-33 gold, which is 90 plus years now, imagine the pieces 70 years old would be into the 1800s back then. Like there must've been the most opulent, unbelievable, unfindable, amazing gold in that collection. You know, you're going back that far. Oh boy, I, I know, I wish, but he had two sons, so I didn't get any of that. But uh, yeah, that would, if I knew then what I know now, but that was my training ground, right? I mean, when I'm 10 years old, yes, when he said, he said to my parents, if anything happened to me, Aunt Bertie will be well taken care of for the rest of her life because of what's in these two safes. So of course I turned around and I looked. You couldn't put one more coin in there, not one. And he would go into very high end. He was a high end antique dealer. So he was going into high end homes and, you know, probably buying them for 35 bucks an ounce, maybe, maybe 50 bucks an ounce. I mean, buying them for nothing. It, that overlaps perfectly because these grand solar minimums, there's really been no society that's survived through this on the reset of the economy, the government, right. And the population migration. So when he's talking about the same thing where, you know, they, every time they confiscate gold, well, I'm saying the same thing. Every time we hit this grand solar minimum period, uh, we have a severe reset and everything falls apart, but it's reassembled uh, under a new fashion. So let me ask you about, so some PAMP, let's say you have a PAMP one kilogram uh, silver bar. Now, is it going to have more value if, if you have the SA certificate that matches up with the numbers on it? versus going in to sell it with somebody with a number bar like that, with, a, with the uh, SA certificate, does that give it more value? Or is it just, I could get a one kg bar from somebody else or a 20 or two 10 ounce bars. And like during these times of reset and monetary duress, will it have any extra value by having the SA certificate with you to show that yes, indeed, there's a QR code on it, it has a number, it was from PAMF itself, they weighed it out and all this goodness, or is it just wild west, I'll take anything at any, anything you have in hand, I'll trade for it. Well, I, th I think what the, you know, I think what the certificate does is it guarantees its authenticity, but I also think that during that period of time, and we've, and if, and I say even, I think that if you look at what's happening in Venezuela right now in the outskirts, where they are actually pricing food and, and everything else, haircuts, everything in terms of gold, right? So their gold and silver have, uh, gold particularly has a specific weight and gold and silver have specific qualities. So while that would be an easier thing, if you've got your certificate of authenticity and, you know, of course this is embedded in there, it's the same kind of thing where it guarantees that it is what it is, then it's easier to transact. But I also think uh, I'm not as concerned about confiscation around silver as I am around gold. So I don't mind silver in any form, you know, including, let's see, where's my, here it is, including a sterling silver chopstick, right? Because it's easy enough to test it. And that's the other thing that people need to realize is that gold and silver in any form is monetary at its base. So if I needed to just cut a piece of this chopstick up, I'm not going to care, right? Aunt Bessie's sterling silver, it's 92% pure. So, you know, for me, since I've been accumulating for so long, I have a lot of flatware, you know, and salt and pepper shakers and, and all of that kind of stuff because it's still silver, Mexican silver is 92 and a half percent pure again. So the certificate makes it easier to transact, 
But I definitely do believe that silver and gold in any form, people will have test kits. They will be able to transact with that, like we're seeing in Venezuela. They just mm. weigh it out. They test it. They weigh it out, and you have a transaction. That is going to be a different world when you go to your farmer's market and have to get a silver test kit or something, and I'll take how much for the spoon, Lynette? All right, I'll trade you two oranges for that one. <laughs> Let me test it well, first. <laughs> but think about this. Everybody's got computers. Everybody's got scales. So it may kind of seem, and the test kits, you know, I don't know how much they are now, but they're not exorbitantly expensive. And I guarantee you they're going to want to take this or even this over this once hyperinflation hits. That's what happens, right? You can't, you can't replace the goods and service. So a vendor cannot replace the goods and services for the amount of these pieces of paper or even digits in, uh, you know, in an intangible fashion. So they would, yeah, they'd much rather have physical silver, physical gold, because they know that it holds its value more. And, and it may be hard for a lot of people to realize that now, but go ahead and look at Venezuela. Go ahead and look at Zimbabwe. You know, I mean, we have current examples of it, current. So we're not talking about 100 years ago. We're talking about today in these different countries, how people are transacting, really transacting with primarily gold, but also secondarily silver. And, and see, silver gets used up in manufacturing. Gold does not, which is really why gold is the primary currency metal and what they reset a currency against. Because even though we've been taught that this is an old relic, well, really? Then why are you accumulating so much of it? And the reality is both gold and silver have the broadest base of buyer. So where we're talking about manufacturing and those other things, both gold and silver are used globally in every single sector of the economy. They have the broadest base of buyer. What do you want in a crisis? That's what you want. Something where you, there's only a buyer in one sector, you've got the most narrow, so if they don't want to buy, you're SOL. And how many ounces of silver per missile? I was saying it was like 500 ounces per missile in some of the U.S. Armory bits and pieces there. They're yeah. doing just fine. Hey, so let me hit, I want to try to wind up here, but I had a-, a 26 quick, bucks and it's 26 bucks an ounce, right? Times 500, that's just in the missile yeah. components. Cause you know, you look at the electrical conductivity that extra one millisecond faster than copper on those guidance systems. And that's why they, they want to use that. Now gold, I guess was too prohibitively expensive cause you know, 500 ounces in a missile. I mean, geez, what would the price be if it was gold wiring in there versus uh, silver? That'd be almost you know, unbuyable. All right, so last couple, last one, question. I'm yeah, go sorry, ahead. one more thing. Not when you have this. I'm buyable. <laughs> I need one of those. Well, it was was that for oh. a can of tuna? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, I'm, that's really not being joking, but the price, you know, if you read some verses in the Bible talking about you're going to work a day's wage, a full day's wage for a loaf of bread. I mean, that's really no joke. That's kind of where we're going. And you yeah. think about the average person, how much would they make per day? You come down into, you know, if you're going to average across, you know, developed nations would be a hundred, $200 a day. And that, you know, at that price of wheat or barley, oh, whoa, that's you, at that point you starve because you just, you can't eat just bread. You're going to need other things too. And, uh, Currency yeah. reset is my thing. Because, you know, uh, some of the people in Venezuela were also using cryptocurrency on the border here. But yeah. a very selective amount would still barter in cryptocurrencies. Now, here's my thing. Carbon credit trading is sort of based oh. on a cryptocurrency um, validation and input. But could this be possible? Yes or no? And this is what I'm going to state the question to you here. If you were to... This all based around carbon credit. And I know the price they want to go to is $200 per one carbon credit. The current trading price is around $8. So the new world that we're entering, or maybe this will be a new mm -hmm. monetary base, at least one of the pillars of the new monetary system beyond uh, gold and silver, 
Now with carbon credits, if you remove everybody from the land or portions of land and you set across and you, you know, use surveying and you mark it out 100 acre by 100, 100 square acres, I guess, if we want to call that, you can get the density of trees in there and then you can use LIDAR and you can get a density of species, average density. You can know how much each tree would sequester and then you could use that as a solid asset base, knowing the value of it for at least 20 years. But there would be no human intervention in that because the minute you cut tree number one, like you're talking about the derivatives, you cut tree, then the value of that investment is no longer the value of that investment, meaning that mm -hmm. you would need to remove people and keep them out of certain sections of the world, the United States, off of forest land or whatever. You digitize forests. You create the new stable coin will be the forests that are digitized as the base for the carbon credit system, as long as they can keep people out and then they can do their uh, average CO2 sequestration on tree species basis. So would that be a possible thing to do as a new leg of the new economy after this reset comes in? Does that sound like fanciful or is that even possible? Well, I mean, look, I don't know about where you are, but I can I can tell you right now that most of the building that's happening here in Phoenix is multifam uh, multifamily, so apartments. So I think that they will attempt to do that. And I was actually talking to a friend of mine in Canada just the other day, and they said that the carbon credit started at like two dollars, and now I could be wrong about this, but I, I'm pretty sure she told me it was up to twenty dollars. So. I think that they will, they'll definitely do it because it's all about control. And if they can control certain areas, I mean, what, what, what has lasted in families, dynastic wealth that I like to talk about that's lasted in families for over 300 years. The minimum is 300 years and real estate would be one of them. So yeah. to make sure that the few were really owning all of that real estate, um, I can, I can see it and I can, you know, here's the thing too, David, I've tried to figure out what the, what foundation they would use to create new money. Like in the fiat system, it's debt, right? So, but that's, but that's not real either. You can grow, you know, you mentioned about all the wealth that, how much wealth there is out there. But the reality is, is that wealth never disappears. It just shifts location. And so the goal is to have it shift away from the many to the few, and they've been very, very successful. Could they base the new monetary system on those carbon credits? Yeah, they could. They can do anything that they want because all I've been able to find so far is that they plan on basing the new money on debt. But what that actually also means is that they're going to have to wipe out all of the debt that they already have in place because it's at news, nosebleed levels in order to start the new system. So that would make a whole lot of sense because you've got value in the real estate and value in the trees that are on the real estate that clean the air and do all sorts of other wonderful things and, you know, and we need them. Could they use that as a new monetary system? As a foundation, yeah, they could. Yeah, they could. So where does that leave you then? You you know, you sp mentioned something really important. So the debt reset. Now, what if I have my house, my land, my farm, my car? I have no debt, zero debt whatsoever. The only thing I have is property tax, which you yep. talk at great length about holding metals yep. to be able to exchange for property tax. Yep. So if you're completely debt free and they reset the debt, are there, is your property and home still in danger of confiscation, even though you're debt free and you don't owe anything on the properties? The only reason why, if as long as you can pay those property taxes, if you are, own everything free and clear, that's your biggest danger. And so that's the importance of having gold to make sure that you can always pay that. Um, because what they do is they put you in crisis, like think back to what happened in 2008 and people were in crisis and they were panicked. And so they restructured all those mortgages, right? But whose benefit were those mortgages restructured to? Not the person that was borrowing the money, but the lenders of that money. 
So I think that that hierarchy is going to get more and more concentrated like it has over the years. Uh, there's been a massive consolidation in those at the top. Um, but that would be, you just need to be able to maintain that because most people don't own their property outright. So they have debt attached to it. Now, if you have debt attached to it, that's another function of the gold because the price has been so, both gold and silver, so ridiculously suppressed. And when they reset the currency, they do it against gold. It takes something that has no real value against something that is all intrinsic value. And then you'll see gold expressed somewhere near its fundamental value. So if you're holding it and you have a mortgage, then you can capture some of those gains, turn it into the funny money for a second and pay that mortgage off. So I don't want anybody to panic if they are not in that circumstance, as long as you can build your portfolio and enable yourself to pay it off. Because if you can't, or if things get really bad uh, and you are not self-sufficient and independent, then you have to take whatever they're willing to give you, whatever the plan is, you're going to go along with it because you don't have any choice. So uh, it's not as in, so real estate, if you own it outright, as long as you can pay your property taxes and you are self-sufficient so that you are not dependent on their systems, then you can maintain your wealth. You can even grow your wealth. There's an opportunity in there. Yeah. So one last thing here. So that microcosm of time to be able to swoop in when the hyperinflation is happening, take the metals and pay off. You talked at length about you know different resets through history, and that's what you study mm -hmm. is the the downfalls of money and the, the the restart of new systems. Like that's always usually that system in between falls really quickly again, and then they come up with something eventually in the future. But what's the signal going to be? And the timing, and I really, in realistic terms of time, once you see the hyperinflation start, you see all these things oh. happening in the markets. Do you have two months, one month, three months to be able to get your metals in, turn into cash to be able to then pay pay down that note on your house? But then, how do you get that physical paper? Because you know, I talked to uh, my banker because I was trying to just game these out on an exit scenario to be able to do exactly what you're saying. But they're saying, well, sometimes it'll take up to six weeks to clear it, and it takes this long for the paper and that long. So when you go in there and pay, and then by, maybe they'll say, well, default, no, we didn't want to take that and you still owe. So how do you even get that free and clear from your bank the instant you pay that off? Because there's still a huge lag time between exiting and paying off in full. I just paid off my truck and I'm still waiting. It's been like two weeks and I still don't have the paperwork in my hand to show that I have zero obligation on that truck and I'm free and clear. So, you know, there's a couple of different aspects moving forward, the trigger that it would be, the time of that, and then, you know, getting with your bank to say, give me that on paper that I, I'm clear off the mortgage as well. Well, you know, that's a really good question. Um, I would say, honestly, on average, you have three overnight resets. Now, it could be more than that. I don't think it's going to be less than that since this is a global issue. I think that you want to get it paid off in the first one because by the time you get to the third one, everything is, um, you know, you, you just won't have any options left. So when we see that reset, that's when you, that's when you go in and pay it off. And I think part of it with all the technology that we have, even if you don't have that paper in your hand, as long you have, as long as you have proof that it's, paid because most people won't, most people won't be able to do it. So, um, I don't know that it's official once you get your paperwork or it's official once you get the payoff amount and you pay it off, right? Because once you, once they give you that amount and you actually submit the funds, then the interest and in everything stops. So you just need to make sure that you have absolute proof of that, even if it takes a while for the paperwork to come through. Yeah, that's and right. It was like, like call us and we'll give you the exact payoff amount to the minute when you send in the funds, right? And then that transfer completes. And then it was from that point, there would be a lag and a delay to actually get, you know, like when you buy the house, you get everything. And I want that physical paper because that could, because if there's a collapse of computer systems, they're like, no, we don't have it. Well, I want, you know, I'm just old school in the hand, the physical. If you don't have it, 
if it's not in your hand, you don't own it. So true. <laughs> it's it true. Could be with fertilizers, you food, or milk. <laughs> Absolutely. But I would also, you know, I would also say with today's technology, as long as you have that documented, I mean, you can take pictures of the whole thing so that you can have that fully documented that you paid that off. That's the way to go. Well, Lynette, you're using Photoshop. I just don't believe it. Where's the physical paper with the bank stamp on it? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Not much is physical these days, but yes, I like those mortgage documents all paid off. I, I agree with you on that one. All right. Well, any last thoughts? Uh, you know, we've had a row of conversation here for a fair bit. And uh, any, any thoughts you'd like to throw out for anybody here? You know, uh, I'll put the links in any way, you know, people who really want to talk to you, because I'm sure there's a line a mile deep down. Oh, who was that? I really want to, you know, learn more and talk to her about. So uh, I, yeah, absolutely. You know, last thoughts. You know, really, I think people think they have all the time in the world until that time is done. Can I even tell you how many people say exactly when is this going to happen? Now, you are much better at that because you've got all of the, those charts and this data. But I think it's from a currency collapse circumstance It's a little more challenging to know exactly the moment. So the time to get ready is before you need to be ready. I can't even tell you how grateful I am that you and I met years ago, but that I also started on this journey like 2010 was when I bought this property here and started putting in my food and my water. And then when I met you, I put in the indoor grow space and, you know, to get ready because the time to do it is now. So if anybody's out there procrastinating, stop procrastinating that's probably the biggest thing and it doesn't matter what anybody else says do what feels right to you to do and don't worry about anybody else that is not paying attention because this is not the time to stop paying attention this is the time to get ready that's what i would really like to say yeah and you know how many of us have experienced that where you, you're trying to push forward and then somebody's grabbing you by the shirt and going no no it's not that bad nothing's gonna happen really you're Are just you thinking crazy? too much you're watching too much news you're doing mm -hmm. it happens a lot so at these times it really is at the very end you know we have two months left before the realization of the fertilizer shortages is here i'm just wondering if the news is going to run with it also to create Probably the artificial not. panic and create the artificial shortages because the supply chains will not catch up at the state they are now. If we go into a panic buy, they will never catch up, at least in this iteration of time. And I'm wondering if it'll be an artificial panic run because they did the thing with the toilet paper. And you saw, I, you know, I went to Costco at those times and you, there was a, how many people had toilet paper in their carts based on the news? I was the weird one that had all food in my cart. And I'm looking all around, all these people are carts are full of toilet paper. And they're looking at me, who's this weird guy buying food? He needs to buy toilet paper. Yeah, I just don't know how I it's going to- I had gonna... lots of toilet paper. I was able to share a lot of toilet paper. <laughs> For yeah. some reason, that toilet paper seems to be a great tool of barter. People really, and it's not just- that it happened. If you listen to my videos from years ago, I'd say toilet paper for goodness sakes. So yeah. I <laughs> again in the hand. Me? It's in the hand. <laughs> it's a barterable. Lynette, it thanks barterable. so much for your time. <laughs> thanks so much for your time. Again, last thing, how how can people contact you if they want to chat more? Well, I have a YouTube channel. And so if you go into YouTube, you can either put ITM trading or you can put Lynette Zhang and, and I'll come up. We're also on, okay, so we're on Rumble, BitChute, and Odyssey as well. Um, or they can go to our website, itmtrading.com, and uh, we're here to be of service. All right, thanks so much. Yeah, and I'll put the links in the description box below. So if you don't want to actually type it in the browser bar, you can just click and go. I'll do you that favor. <laughs> Everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of our conversation. And the weekend's coming up. Please do something this weekend to get yourselves ready. Uh, this is the real deal. It's not going away and it's amplifying and it'll be here so lightning fast. By the time you blink your eyes, your food prices will have doubled or tripled and you're going to be limited oh, yeah. on what you can buy in the stores. Oh, yeah. Get, get growing. All right. Bye.